Hey everybody, it's Jeff here from NVIDIA Games, back from our episode of Feature Friday. This week we are playing more of The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo. We got to the Dark World in the last episode, defeated Aghanim in the Light World. And in this episode we're going to be doing the first dungeon of the Dark World. We gotta head there obviously, because we are on the top of the former Hyrule Castle. Which is where uh, we would be in the Light World if we were currently in the Light World, but we're in the Dark World. So we're on the... Pyramid, Temple, I guess, whatever you want to call it. So anyways, so let's get started and see how it goes with the first Dungeon of the Light World, which is technically Dungeon 5, if you consider uh, Hyrule Castle will be Dungeon 4, which I do. So this is Dungeon 5 we're going to be doing in this episode, but Dungeon 1 of the Dark World. So here we go. Alright, so there's a heart piece over here to the right we can get. Very easily, just have to go down here. Yeah, that's right up here. Nice and out in the open. Just another, I need to get another ferry here. I've got an empty bottle. I don't have to, but it's beneficial. This tree right here usually gives a ferry when you dash into it, which it just did there, you saw. And I caught it with the bug catching net, of course. Go around these guys. These, um, guys are kind of like walking piranha plants there. If you freeze them and smash them with an item we're going to get in the next dungeon, they tend to give you magic containers, usually. Not always, but sometimes you get fairies. You usually get something decent from them if you freeze them first and then smash them with the item. When you go to this dungeon here, the first one in the Dark World, you need to have at least 110, I think it is, maybe 120, I can't remember. Either 110 or 120 rupees. If you don't, you won't be able to get in. It's required to do, unless you use a walkthrough walls cheat code. You know, Game Shark or, or Game Genie or whatever. This is before Game Shark, so, um, Fresh and Replay, I guess, is the equivalent. And the SNES, I don't remember. Wrong direction. If you look here, you can kind of see the path. It's where the little holes are on the top of the grass there, or bush bushes, I guess. I guess it's technically bushes. So where the little holes are is where you can walk. There's a couple different ways you can go through here. And you want to basically find your way through. And you can do so by trial and error too. So here is Kiki the Monkey. I'm Kiki the Monkey. Kiki, I love rupees more than anything. Can you spare me 10 rupees? So if you say never give him anything, he runs off. So you have to say give him 10 rupees. Kiki, Kiki, Kiki. Good choice. I will accompany you for a while. Kiki, kick, Kiki. So he just wanders around with you here. If you go off the, the screen and leave this area, I believe he just runs away. I don't recall, but here's the entrance. It says, Key, 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 if you give me 100 rupees, I'll open the entrance for you. Key, Key, Key. What will you do? Ask him to open it? Try to open it yourself. Like I said, you have to give him the money to open it, so you don't have a choice. Key, Key, good choice. Then I get 100 of your rupees. Kick, Key, Key. She has a little, couple loops there and hops up there and jumps on the other switch that you wouldn't be able to access otherwise. Again, if you have a Walter Wallace code with um, Game Engineer or Production Replay, you might be able to access it. I've never tried that before, but... Or you could just possibly walk in directly without having to unlock it. Never tried, like I said. So, yeah, I'll try that one of these days. This is the Dark Palace, I think it's called? I can't remember the name. Yeah, that's what it is. First dungeon of the Dark World. There's a small key. I went that way intentionally because I knew I needed a key, so I just went ahead and went that way. Yeah, I can't go that way. That's right. Have to go down and then back up. And you notice here when I get into the next room, I'm going to be skipping the right side. And that's intentional. Because 
I can come back up there a different way if I need to. Uh, but it's not required to go to that side. So I'm gonna go up here first before I go down there. And that is also intentional. So I need this key. Now we will go over to the left. There's little turtle looking guys there with the burgundy red coloring. You can't do anything with them until you get the dungeon item here. So, not even worth bothering. Obviously being a crack floor there, you can access it by bombing it like I just did. And then fall in. And we're on the upper ledge here. If we had gone down the other side there where we pushed that block down, we would be down the lower area there on the right. Interestingly, the block is not there. <laughs> Seemingly, anyway. So that's what we need the key for to get up here, which is the treasure chest, and it is the big key. And now we'll hop back down. You can take the stairs if you want, but you don't have to. This is, now we're on the lower level here. Here's another treasure chest and it's another key. These, uh. Skeletons there sometimes drop good stuff. I got a full magic container and a fairy. Oh, there's the block I pushed down on the salt. Did these? Oh, I forgot to get the uh, magic power. So the little red guy there is, they're called an anti-fairy. If you use the magic powder on them, once you get it, you can turn them into a regular fairy. This is our first level teleporters there, the little orangish color thing. So, you walk into it. So these are the extra crack doors here, which you can knock down with, or walls rather, which you can knock down by dashing into them. The red ones will shoot at you if you line up directly, and you can't block those shots until you get a better shield, which I don't have currently. That's not going to be until closer to the end of the game, getting the like, shield upgrade. This is the map of compass here, I don't remember which. Oh, okay. I don't think there's anything of consequence on the right side here, but I'll bomb it anyway. Just in case. And yeah, it's a map. And yeah, fairies. So you got extra fairies there if you need them. I don't, so I'll just leave them. This is our key here, which we needed. Now one thing you can do in dungeons, if you have the mirror, which you get um, by just progressing through the game when you're on your way to level 3, you can uh, use that to warp back to the beginning of the dungeon. But if you do that, all the enemies regenerate. So if you're trying to not have enemies regenerate, then that would be a bad thing. But if you want them to regenerate, well that can be beneficial. So you can use that to get around and work that place sometimes. So we are back here where we just were earlier. Here we go, we're on the right side. So I told you we were going to come back, and we did. So we can push this statue from this side here and go back in the middle section. And now we're back in this room again. This level has a bit of backtracking in it, as you can probably tell. So now here we are in, back in this room again, and I'm going to jump across here. There's little arrows indicate you can jump in that direction by just walking off the edge, basically. This next room has a little trick you can do. It's a bomb jump. If you bomb correctly, like right there, you can pass through that barrier and actually access the treasure chest without going through here. But it's really, really difficult to do. I've only done it like maybe once. <laughs> and that was after I failed like about, I don't know, at least a hundred times. So I'm not gonna even bother trying it. 
This room, unlike the one in a previous dungeon, you cannot light up. There's no brazers in this room, to my knowledge. So you just have to explore your way around. Find the correct way. There's a key down here. Another chest was bombs. Which indicates that that is what you need to get to the next room, which is where the treasure chest is. The big treasure chest. And that bomb wall is right here. And here's the big treasure chest, and it's the hammer. You got the magic hammer. You can drive the wooden stakes down into the ground. You can use it to pound on other things, too. Like enemies, for example. Alright. So we got the hammer, so we can... Attack those turtles that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna come across some. As you, the sword is not effective against them unless you use the hammer on them first. You can also do this with the hammer. Use it to smash skulls in the dark world or pots in the light world, which is the same thing. Here's the turtles I was referring to. So you hit them again with the hammer. While they're flipped, they'll flip back over. Which you just saw there a couple times. And you can attack them with the sword too once they're flipped over on their shells. I think this is a compass. Yeah. I don't think there's anything down there in the locked door, so we're just gonna go down the stairs. And we have the braziers here so we can light up this room. You don't have to though, it's optional. Three rupees for everybody. Lots of blue rupees here. Or five each, of course. Some more turtles there on the inside portion, which we can't get to just yet. And we had got one arrow from that treasure chest. Why? I'm not really sure, but that's what was there. And we got a small key, too. Arrow 14 rupees. We're close to the max we can carry, which is 999. Maybe we do have to go that way. I don't know. No, we don't go that way. That's right. Actually, you do. That's right. Okay. My bad. I can't remember if you went that way or not. So you do go that way. Random five rupees in the treasure chest there. Push the statue. And here we are on the other side of this room. Or back where we were, rather. Uh, this is annoying. Time this correctly. Nope. There you go. <laughs> Only took three tries. Just trying to get them out of my way. So when I jumped across, I wouldn't get attacked by them. Alright, so we got crystal blocks there. We have to lower, hit the crystal switch, and go through. And this is where we were earlier. Those little head looking things that are popping up out the purple blocks there. You can smack them down with the hammer. It's like whack a mole, kind of. So this statue here can be pushed. And you push it up here onto the switch. Because if you stand on the switch, it won't stay open unless you stand on it. So you use the statue in lieu of you standing there so you can go through the door. More of these guys. Here's the shot that the, that guy fires, as I was talking about earlier. The red ones. Can't remember what their names are. Another crystal switch, just have to hit it once. And avoid the spike thing. And here you might be thinking, well, this is a dead end, right? Well, you'd be wrong. What you're supposed to do is shoot an arrow into the eye. I believe there's a telepathy stone, one of the little stone blocks that has like a little triangle on it. It's gray in different dungeons and throughout the game. And I think it tells you about the hint saying like shoot the statue in the eye or something like that. It tells you that's what you're supposed to do basically. This takes us back down, down uh, to the next floor here. And here we are in basement one. Got more turtles and these little purple and red switches that I was talking about earlier. And you sm slowly smack them, and there's a crystal switch there. 
I'm actually coming through here and forgot to get an extra key before I've been locked out. So, that's not fun. <laughs> Having to backtrack. That's happened more than once. Sometimes I forget to get keys. More of these turtles. The hammer one shots them once you hit them over on their shell. Sword does not. Not until you get a higher level sword, anyway. So, more brazers here. You can line them up if you want, but that's completely optional. Teleporter. And here we are on the inside of this room. This is where there's a massive ton of blue rupees were earlier. I remember. These guys usually drop rupees, so very rare for them to drop anything else. Alright, so we're at the boss. Helmarok. I think that's his name. So your objective here is to break his mask. Helmarok King, maybe that's his name. I think Helmarok is the little ones. The green face guard. Like I said, the objective is to break the mask, and you do that with a hammer. I think you might be able to do it with bombs too, but I don't remember that for sure. I just always use the hammer, it's easier. Bombs are limited and you don't want to waste them, so. Might as well just use the hammer. I think you can shoot him with arrows once you break his mask off and then a little green jewel on there on his forehead. But it's hard to line up correctly, because he moves kind of quickly sometimes. There you go, he's dead. Very simple fight. He will throw his tail at you occasionally, which will hurt if it hits you, but... And he shoots fireballs, like you saw there. Pretty easy to dodge. So we got our first crystal from the Dark World. And rescued the first maiden. And there she is. Link, because of you, I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. This world used to be the Golden Land where the Triforce was hidden. But because Ganon, the boss of Thieves, also known as the King of Thieves, wished it, the world was transformed. I'm sure he's intending to conquer even our light world after building his power here. He is trying to open a larger gate between worlds near the castle using our powers. But the gate is not open completely yet. If we seven maidens come together, we can break the barrier around Ganon's hiding place. I will tell you where the other girls are held. I believe you will destroy Ganon. I will return to my original form at that time. Do you understand? Yes? Not at all. May the way the hero lead to the Triforce. So if you say not at all, it shall repair herself, basically. By the way, this is a Dark World map, and as she mentioned, she marks the locations. That's where all the dungeon locations are. In our next episode, we are not going to be doing Dungeon 2, which is in the middle of the bottom portion of the map, we'll be doing Dungeon 4, which is all, all the way in the left there, because there's um, things we can get there that will help us in Dungeon 2 and 3. I always do that when I play through. Originally, when I first played through the game, I, di I didn't know about that, of course, so... But um, that's what I'm going to be doing in the next episode, is Dungeon 4, over there on the left side of the map. That'll be next Friday, of course. So that will do it for this episode of Feature Friday. Be sure to tune in next week for dungeon number 4 of the Dark World, which is going to be our dungeon number 6 overall. And so we'll be playing through that. I think, what is that called? Something of Thieves. Den of Thieves, Palace of Thieves, something like that. I can't remember. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this episode of Feature Friday. Don't forget you can subscribe to us on YouTube. We post videos throughout the week, as well as the recorded versions of our live streams from Twitch. And don't forget you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash nvideogaming or on Twitter at twitter.com slash nvideogames. And you can check us out on the web at nvideogames.com for Nintendo news, screenshots, trailers, reviews, and lots more good stuff. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Game on.